Bananas the pot-stirring villain is officially back. Plus, a Vacation Alliance handshake, the biggest, strangest balloons I've ever seen, Derek maybe breaks his leg, Devin and Michelle face their first relationship hurdle, Laurel is somehow just skating by, Corey and Rachel get big elimination wins, and Josh has way too many friends, way too many IOUs, and no idea what to do or how to handle any of it. It's the challenge. Battle of the Airs episode 6 recap coming up right now. What up, my fellow challenge lovers? Welcome to the challenge historian where we dive deep into all things MTV's The Challenge, past, present, or future, if it's happening in the challenge universe. We are here to document it. I am your host and dedicated challenge historian, Jacob Hollibald. Thank you so very, very much for being here with me today. Back to our regularly scheduled Wednesday nights. We just watched the episode live, not physically together, but mentally together. And now we are here gathering our thoughts doing the podcast right after, not watching the cast member lives, not digging into social media, not taking time to think out all of our thoughts. We're just hit and play and going right afterwards, as we typically do. I appreciate everyone's patience last week when we didn't want to do that, when we did really want to gather some more information, hear some more people's stories, and gather my own personal thoughts. So appreciate your patience Last week, we're here, of course, this week to discuss episode six, Battle of the Eras, a lot to get to, a way more political, strategic, heavy episode, so a lot to cover here. Only programming reminders is next week, you will need to be patient for me one more time. I lied when I said it'd be back to Wednesday nights every week, pretty much the rest of the season. I forgot and slash just didn't quite realize until now. Next week, Wednesday is my wedding anniversary, and so I will not be watching the episode live that evening. I'll be off celebrating my beautiful wife and I, and so I will be here Thursday, probably midday Thursday is when you could expect next week's episode recap to come out. I'll get up, watch early Thursday morning, get that recap out sometime then. Otherwise, Battle of the Airs is all we got for the foreseeable future, at least the next two, three, four weeks or so when there's more content to be discussed. You'll be the first to know. Agenda for the podcast tonight, regular old walk through the episode, big storylines, big opinions, anything we got. Then we'll do awards. Then we'll talk targets. Then we will do predictions. And someone went perfect on their predictions last week. So feeling good. Going to see if we can go back to back weeks of absolutely nailing our predictions. As always, no spoilers here. I know nothing. Thankfully, somehow the biggest season with probably as much spoiler talk as there probably ever was about a season out there. And I did stay clean. We have no idea. And so while I for once got some predictions right, it is uh, it is truly predictions. So as always, I don't typically give the non-spoiler spoiler it's not a spoiler warning if you're warning that there is no spoilers and i know no spoilers i don't know what to call that but that's what you just got let's dive in episode six battle of the eras here we go Opening house segment, everything pre-Daily Challenge to kick it off. A bunch of quick things to run through here. We start, as we did last week, I think the week before, pretty much every week at this point, we have started with what we did here, one of the pictures on the wall, although we don't never know if it's actually the picture, you know, because they're putting the clip in there. Nice little editing touch, but an old school clip, something to set the stage for the episode in some way. And this one was Evelyn's confessional on Rivals 1, discussing the potential bloodbath that was going to be the T-bone elimination, the final elimination between Johnny and Tyler and Adam and CT, one of the most memorable, iconic eliminations in the show's history and as plenty of people pointed out we get Evelyn which is all that matters we get a brief moment of Evelyn a flashback of Evelyn talking Evelyn on our screens what a joy that is and I love that they are just going with this trend of every episode is going to start with a little stage setter of an old clip an old confessional an old something featuring someone who isn't on the season but deserves to be represented in some even small way like this on this monumental season. So Evelyn this week, Cyrus last week. I forget who the ones exactly, I mean, some of the ones before were, you know, I mean, obviously we did the DM one, started the whole thing in the launch special. That was more than just the first scene of the show. But 
you get what I'm saying. I love that they're doing this. I love we get a brief shot of Tyler Duckworth, my guy, second favorite challenger of all time. So love everything they're doing with how they're starting the episode with one of those clips to give a little extra respect, a little nod to more and more history of the show and other players within the history of the show. Then we get some Laurel and Kara stuff, and honestly, I'm going to likely just ignore that storyline as much as possible from now until the end of the season or whenever that storyline stops. I will talk about it if there is a real confrontation again or if one of them gets out or something actually consequential, but just the little bickering back and forth confessionals, this, that, and the other. Not interested, so we're just going to move past it. There is then a bunch of Alliance talk. This whole episode feels like it's just one after the other. These two talking, these three talking, this team talking, these two talking, Alliance, 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 strategy, 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 politics, politics, politics. That is the whole episode. Most of it's pretty good. I like the pace of it too, especially because some of it is a little just kind of straightforward, boring more or less. So the pace of we're here, we're there, we're there, we're here, we're there is pretty solid and uh the only things really to talk about now that we wouldn't well we will talk about later but just to point out they're setting the stage early jenny outcast of her team also their best player though olivia says casey's the best player debatable certainly casey very very good player i would take jenny as the best player on that team male or female um that's just me but she is the outcast of their team that obviously comes into play again later we get some kind of nothing burgers from a few different conversations that we see happen. And then we get the Vacation Alliance uh, discussion. Josh and Tori step out to the side. We find out, you know, there's the core four, as they say here in this moment, of Josh and Casey and Tori and Devin, which makes sense. That is kind of the core of the Vacation Alliance. Um, I would put Anissa in the core of it, but she's obviously no longer there. And so we get that good confirmation, which is matters later in the episode. We also find out that they now have a VA Vacation Alliance handshake, which I can only imagine. I would give anything to see a montage of so many of you probably listening here now and so many challenge fans who hate the Vacation Alliance watching this episode and having to watch these two do a handshake that includes a little VA up down with their fingers, the whole thing. I can't imagine the faces that were made, the things that were said by folks watching the show who hate and despise this alliance and a lot of the players within it having to sit and watch that. I I honestly was getting a lot of entertainment out of thinking about all of those reactions that were happening out across the challenge fandom. And then we end the big, you know, montage of Alliance talk with Bananas talking to Jenny and, you know, solidifying that those two, uh, you know, have a history, are friends, are looking out for each other in the game. And we get the first allusion to Bananas wanting to potentially split Michelle and Devin up, which is, of course, something we're going to talk about at length in just a few minutes. Then we are off to a daily challenge and they've done it again. Like... If there was ever an argument, uh, there, there's plenty of arguments for team seasons. I try to make them from time to time. I am certainly a big fan of them. I've been making them throughout this season already. But the strongest argument they might now have for team seasons is they're really good at making the team daily challenges. I've liked basically, I think all of them. Uh, and I really liked this one. I thought it was a great design. It's something completely new and random, but it's still cool, still fits within the bounds of like there's some physical part, there's some strategic part, there's a puzzle at the end, there's teamwork, cohesion, the whole thing. Loved, loved, loved it. They are crushing it on the team dailies. The only thing I will say is just to continue pointing out the balloon thing is a bit of a crapshoot. Like, you're, you're, you're making a bunch of these big, huge... I don't know what these balloons were. They are not balloons I have never seen. Sometimes people were, like, you know, maneuvering them pretty violently to no pop. Other times people put a finger on one as they tried to gently move it along through the air and it would pop. I don't, I don't know. But it does open you up to the things we've been talking the last couple of weeks about of... You know, these the people building these challenges have an incredibly difficult job. And when you put things in front of them that could be extremely difficult to build 100% 
exactly the same everything across the board when you have to do 400 nails into a wall or you have to build two contraptions to hold all of the little uh, jacks that you have to pick up and two contraptions to roll the ball down. And here you have to blow up all these crazy balloons that are no type of balloon I've ever seen before. You do open yourself up to it's a little bit of a crapshoot. The, the materials we're working with and if they're all going to work the exact same for the cast. And so they open themselves up to uh, the crapshootness of it all. Um, but uh, it, it doesn't work against them really here or seem to much at all. Derek gets hurt. We saw this on the next week on. We saw it in the, you know, the episode trailer uh, commercial for the episode. And we'll talk about it here because I guess it, it probably won't come up again the rest of the episode. Look, in the moment he says, I think I broke my leg. Uh, he lands in mud. He jumps down from, you know, I don't know how high that is, but that's six, seven feet up. Lands down in thick mud. Leg gets stuck. Bends the wrong way. He, he yells out that he's broken it. He's hobbling the rest of the time. He's crawling the rest of the time. He is attempting to do the rest of the thing. It is extremely admirable. And later in the episode, we see him kind of hobbling around on with a brace on his knee. He has a full-blown brace on his knee at the elimination arena. And it makes me think this guy tore something in his knee. And next week, we're going to find out. They're going to tell him to go home at the daily uh, or something to that effect. And that's going to really, really suck. I am really hopeful that doesn't happen. I am really hopeful maybe, uh, not that I'm hopeful he's had a knee injury in the past, but like that if he did, like it was just re-aggravated, felt weird, scared him, but you know, ultimately he's he's fine and you know, everything's good. Everything continues. Hopefully somehow, some way he can continue at somewhere near 100% here and doesn't have to go home from this injury. That would really, really suck. We don't need to lose more era one people, especially because of injury purposes. So that's that. Kara decides to not try and throw the um, the daily challenge. She is a bigger person than me. Uh, I enjoy the era two in advance the team conventional Laurel in a pretty aggressive manner. A pretty you know like a non aggressive manner. Um, maybe aggressive is the right word. It's it's tough. But she her tone when explaining I apologized and hopefully this team could just kick ass. I believe in us. Sounds like someone who knows that there's very little chance that these people are going to buy what is, I am saying right now, and they have every right not to, but I'm still going to be mad about it, and it is what it is. Um, and Kara, you know, says it's not her character. She's not going to not gonna throw anything, and therefore her kind of allies within the team, Derek and Ryan most notably, are not going to throw anything with Kara. And yeah, if I'm them... I I don't know if if I'm them all those three in particular if I'm Kara I'm like I hate you Laurel and bananas I more or less hate you too it would be great to see both of you gone screw it I know that means more of us being the captains I know if you're Ryan and Derek yes there is it then becomes like one of us would have to be the captain when it's not Nehemiah or then if Nehemiah were to lose it's, it's just us you know bananas loses but you do get you could have get bananas out of the game. You could be that that's a good thing for you, and you could stand by your teammate and Kara and the whole thing. I think there's an argument mostly for entertainment and being petty purposes that they should throw it. They choose not to. Very admirable of them. Ultimately, though, during the daily challenge, Erewhon's a complete and utter mess again, beyond just the injury, just a complete mess, which is well at the end of the season, we'll recap uh how all of the eras fare here and how deserved some of the commentary between eras and about different eras old the young and everything in between is we'll talk about that at the end of the season but era one hot mess episode after episode after episode it's not like this is the second time it's happened it's every single episode that we've had so far era one is a mess so that is that who's not a mess is era four they go slow they go steady and they get the most balloons, which is the strategy. It is the only strategy. It is the obvious strategy. The moment these rules are explained is the winner of this will not be anything to do with speed. It'll be who can get the most balloons. The speed thing is a tiebreaker. There is a very low chance that a tiebreaker is needed. 
let's go extremely slow, as slow as we possibly want, and get every single balloon that we can. That is the only strategy. If you have any experience with the challenge, if you watch it, this is not me having thought long and after it, you know, having watched the daily an hour ago now. No, this was in the moment immediate, like just go slow and get all the balloons. That's the strategy. There's been challenges like this before where it's like time versus amount, but amount matters more. Time is just the tiebreaker. And guess what? The newest era, the youngest in the game, players of youngest in the game years players, because they're not that much younger than any of the other people there as far as the cast goes, actual age. But Era 4 is the only one who gets it, who says, this is what we should do. This is the strategy. Let's do it. It's not Era 3 with Devin, the mastermind, or Jordan, the, you know, the one who likes to think he's best and is yelling at his teammates again here. And we're seeing that Jordan a little too prevalent last episode in this episode again for his team's liking, I'm sure. It's not Era 2 with Bananas and Laurel and Kara and all of this experience. It's not Era 1, the OGs, the super duper experience, the been around forever, seen it all. It's Era 4 and uh, they get it done and it, you know, go figure. Then we're back at the house and it's really one thing to discuss. There's a bunch of scenes. They're at the house. They're at the club. They're back at the house. They're in the chamber, the house, the whole thing. But it's really just one thing, one decision to discuss. It is Josh deciding, Josh and Jenny, uh, but Josh being the one who seemingly could have been swayed. We'll touch on both opinions and both point of view here for sure. Josh and Jenny deciding to save Bananas and throw in Corey and John A., uh, when there is absolutely no reason for Josh to be doing this. There's some reasons for Jenny to be doing this, but not that many, ultimately. And it's Bananas just stirring the pot. It is starting to become a real tradition on this show. I'm, I didn't go back. I, I know all the examples are in my brain, but it's becoming a real tradition to some, in, in the, the last you know dec, decade, season, the last era of the show, that those who swear that they do not want Bananas to win again, they are desperate to either just make a final or get that win themselves. And they would be stupid to let the guy who has won seven times stand in their way, to not take a shot at him, or even in other times, a Jordan to do so, or a CT to do so. You've got to get those people out. I swear I'm going to do it this time. And then they don't. They don't take the shot at a Bananas or a CT or a Jordan, but mostly Bananas. It feels like it's a tradition now on every season. It's like there's an obvious shot to take at Bananas or one of the other big, big wig guys. And it's to be taken by one of the obvious candidates to take it who has every incentive and every reason to do so, like a Josh, and they don't do it when they could easily do it lay it off as like this is obvious why would i not throw you in it's nothing personal it's purely the game everything's fine there's no vendetta here there's no rivalry there's no backstabbing this is just obviously the thing i josh should do to you bananas because you're you you've won what you've won you can beat me i'm josh i haven't gotten there i'm trying to climb the mountain top why would i not do this it's so obvious and it never happens and it feels like it's a new tradition for the show but bananas gets there by pulling some old school bananas pot stirring and chicanery. He has one move up his sleeve and it isn't that him and Josh are that tight. It isn't that I should be Josh's number one. We're in the same alliance. We know that bananas is on the periphery of the vacation alliance because he came into ride or dies with Nani, who's with Casey, for a member, core four member of the vacation alliance, as we now know from this episode. And so he's kind of on the periphery there. He's worked with all of them. He's befriended all of them off the show, USA 2, the whole thing, even though as they play here and it plays into bananas favor, the USA 2 vote. Um, that Josh cast against him and how Bananas handled that moment there, which is to go back to that, an expert level, that move of knowing I'm going to do a lot more of these challenges. This guy gets invited to every one of these at this point. Why would I blow up and do it? I know that I now have this in my pocket for the future. He didn't need to blow up on him. He didn't need to do anything about it. It wouldn't have aided him on USA 2 to have done anything drastic with that slight betrayal by Josh, but he saved it. 
And now he's got it here when it can it can be very advantageous to him. And it is advantageous to him. So he plays the card, as he says late in the episode, he builds the biggest pile of guilt on top of Josh's shoulders that he possibly can, and it works. He plays on, he knows Josh as a player and knows Josh cares about what people think about him. Josh is easily pointed towards playing with his emotions versus his brain, and this is doing both of those. He says, Josh, you're a piece of shit if you do this. You did it once before. You can make up for it. You cannot be a piece of shit. You were a piece of shit before. I could take that away. I could say you're not a piece of shit, or I could double down and you're a bigger piece of shit, and you can feel guilty, and you feel horrible. Get in your emotions. Decide how you want to feel, and now, oh, I'm safe. Good. It's beautiful. It's masterful. It's fantastic pot-stirring stuff from Bananas, but that is far from the least of the pot-stirrings that he does because full villain pot stir bananas is back because not only is he working josh in this episode he is beginning his work on Devin in this episode does he is he just being a good friend to michelle probably not probably not this was the first i heard of those two being good friends again staples of the show now everyone who's kind of a reoccurring staple cast member at some point or other for real or for benefits in the game, befriends bananas these days, um, and he befriends them. But do I think he's trying to be some great friend and just be like, hey, you know, romance is in the house, Devin's really smart, he plays the game? No, because I don't think that Devin has a history of playing the game very strategically, of course, very, very good, and all of that stuff. He doesn't have a history of, like, manipulating women in the house to his advantage in the game not the biggest politicker in the history of the show by any means. And so there's really nothing to go on here other than Bananas clearly knows Devin what beat me, one, heads up, beat me and Nani, he and Tori beat us on Ride or Dies. And he has been to a bunch of finals recently. He has more or less run the game in a large way. His alliance, but him as the mastermind of the alliance, more or less, has run the game for a few seasons in a row and has a lot of people here doing his bidding at, at this big alliance that he's not in the core four of. Devin's the head of it. He's like, how can I get that guy off his game? How can I get him to maybe play a little more emotional? I'll rile him up by telling his new girlfriend that he's not in it for the right reasons, essentially an old bachelor trope. And uh, it, it works. Bananas is lying his ass off to the group of them when he's like, I didn't say this and that or the other to Michelle. And he did. See, you know, we have the audio of it. He did. But he knows everything he's doing. He's doing it expertly. You can hate him for it. You can think it's shady. You can think it's stupid. But it's it's beneficial to his game here in this moment. And it's, for the most part, uh, solid, entertaining uh, reality television. Now, let's get to Josh's part of this again. He has no business going against his whole team and the other team that his main alliance members are on and therefore his main alliance members, the main one of whom, Devin, would be thrilled if he put in bananas. It is unreal that Josh does not push for, like, Jenny, I know that's your friend and, you know, you know I know where you feel in our team that you're at the bottom of it and that's one person who actually Maybe it, you are maybe his number one, probably number two female behind Laurel. Like, I get it, but our whole team wants to do this. I want to do it. I think it's best for you to Laurel or Rachel goes home. It's amazing. There is no reason Josh should not be pushing and pushing for this to be Bananas and Laurel going in and saving Corey and John A, getting Corey to kind of stay. Corey and John A, the ones kind of, on the outs with an era three, as we see, if era three and four are working together, but really it's just the vacation alliance and the core members working together, era three and four just get the peripheral benefit of that. Then you keep some of those peripheral people happy in Corey and John A, maybe rope them back in just a little bit, and you take out either Brad or Bananas, two really good players, or Rachel or Laurel, two really good players. So it is clear as day what Josh should do. His whole team wants him to do it. His main alliance members of Tori and Devin and Casey. Uh, pro Tori's probably the only one that's like, oh, maybe don't. But Devin definitely wants him to. Casey probably wants him to. And he should want himself to. So 
It's absurd. It's crazy. I can't believe it. But, you know, hats off to Bananas for playing the right cards and playing the right buttons on Josh to know how to get the result he wants. For Jenny's part, I get her part a bit more as far as her wanting to be, again, probably is number two to Bananas after Laurel and in some ways is kind of tied for number one. If they eventually are not on teams at any point, Jenny would probably be his number one and would be down to be like, if this ever goes individual and we got to like pair up or anything like that, it's me and you. I would totally see that him or yeah, him and her bananas and Jenny have worked together. Both of the two seasons she has been on before they have won on total madness, not together, but they both won that individual season. So that'll bond you a little bit. They're friends outside of the game. And there, there are, I don't normally share a bunch of just the random rumors that people tweet and there's no, to my knowledge, no substance to, but there are rumors of a uh, romantic history there at some point in some of the seasons uh, they've done together. I, I don't think that's true, but you never know. There's a lot. We probably only see half of the hookups at any romantic, anything that we see in challenge houses actually ends up on our screen. But all that being said, while I get it from her perspective, I think she should be in fairly easy to convince back to the logical side of, hey, Jane is to her team what I am to my team. It would be good to add her as a number. And maybe we then go like, hey, Aviv, you kind of seem like you're in the same spot on your team. And maybe we get a little cross-team alliance building up against the Vacation Alliance here. Maybe we try to get a little power back in the game, get a little outcast thing going. Maybe we just simply look at it as, okay, so I'm looking around, and in a final, Casey, I don't want her there, but she's on my team, a little more difficult. Kara, Laurel, Rachel are probably the next three, and Tori are the next, you know, the ones next on the list of people I don't want there in the final. I could have Laurel versus Rachel. Sounds amazing. One of them going home sounds great for my game. So I think... If Josh would just do what is right for him, Jenny would be pretty easy to come around to. My whole team wants to, he wants to, and honestly, if I'm logical about it, I, I can find a way for this to be as good or better for me than the other decision. So that's all of that. Devin and Michelle are obviously a part of this storyline. Again, the pot stirring by Bananas. Devin's great. Michelle's great. I like them together. They're two of my favorite cast members. I think they're two people I would actually really enjoy outside of the show, hanging out with or anything like that. This is a little weird moment for them. The whole little back and forth of like, well, you told me he was talking shit and saying I didn't actually like you. Of course I'm going to go talk like that. That moment was a little strange. A little hiccup, but it's in a challenge house. A romance in a challenge house. It, you're going to, if this was the worst moment, they're doing very well. Um, I'm rooting for them. And I'm hoping that this is just a little bump and Devin doesn't start getting off his game let bananas get under his skin enough to completely throw him off because i think he's in a really good position right now in this game and i think she is too for the most part Corey uh is you know Corey and john a are obviously the two uh that get the detrimental blow here of having to go into elimination Corey does his best to pitch the obvious strategy is in the chamber is solid performance of let's talk the hype, let's talk bananas and Laurel and how good they are. What are we doing here, guys? Um, but it wasn't nearly enough for me. I think he and John A need to be going way further, getting way more upset, be way more theatrical about this in the chamber. Like it, it was it was one thing to be like, bananas and laurel are really good. You guys should be taking a shot. Go further, be like, yo, Rachel versus Laurel. We all want to see it. The fans all want to see it. And all of us should want one of them out because they're both badasses. Probably the favorites to win this thing. Rachel, you're amazing. Laura, you're amazing. I'm sorry. This is only because of how amazing you are that you should be going against each other. Same thing. Brad and Bananas. Like they should be laying it on, bringing Rachel and Brad and how good they are into it. And then outside of the chamber, at the club, throw a fit. Make an effing scene. You've seen it work before. You're both TV professionals at least, you know, at least entertain us a little more at the end of the day. Like, get upset. Um, you know, they both played the, like, I'll be confident. I'll be cool. I'm going to come for you when I come back. You know, just let, let, it, let it be. You know, I'm angry, but I'm calm. I'm collected. I'm the adult. I'm professional. I've got kids. The whole thing. No. Make a scene. Throw a fit. <laughs> Pitch this strategy, the obvious one, the correct one, the one that should happen until your face turns blue 
and you can't say it another single time. Then we're into the arena, and again, production just crushing it on the games. I know there is the obvious thing I already talked about in this episode of it's hard to build these things when you add hundreds of variables into different different parts of it. But all of that aside, they have been crushing it on the dailies. They have been crushing it on the elimination games. This one is so good. I loved this game. This is one of my favorite day, uh, eliminations in a very, very, very long time. It is so fantastic. Loved every single aspect about it. Just beautiful. Beautiful. Corey and Brad. Corey is the calmer one to start, and that ends up really being the difference because I think once Brad switches from one-hand power throws to two-hand a little more methodical and softer, he he hits a couple, same as Corey hits a couple. Corey just hits a couple more early because he starts in the calmer chest pass variety, and that really does end up being the difference in the end. Also, shout out to Corey for realizing, I know, there was a couple people kind of yelling it, but if I'm him, I was tuning Jordan out long before Jordan gave him good advice of the, you're leading, just get rid of the balls as fast as you can. So to, you know, that is the obvious after the fact, it becomes like, oh yeah, that's an obvious strategy. Once you get a lead, especially if you get like a two or three point lead, start doing that. And so for him to see that good on him, he gets a win. He's nine and four in eliminations. He's made a bunch of finals. He has gotten second and third. He's beaten good people in those eliminations. He's beaten a Durrell. He's now beaten a Brad. I don't, I don't have the whole list nine in front of me, but he's the, I'm trying to even think, is there any like really bad losses in there? There was the champs for stars thing, but that doesn't count. That, that was the only time it was like, that was bad. And then that was him and Nelson kicking the soccer balls was legitimately harrowing to watch but he won he, he won that so maybe one of those isn't the best win uh one kind of ish bad loss spies lies and allies i think he probably should have beat logan but honestly logan's a surfer and it was basically a balance contest so like not a bad loss there either he's a lead at this game is what i'm saying i don't think people want to say that about him think that about him but at the the game part the the sports part if you will the daily challenges the eliminations and yes even the finals he is kind of elite at the game. He's very, very good at all of that part. He is not good in the politics, in the alliances, in the deal making. That never has been his strong suit. That is not on his side. And yes, he can be awful at puzzles. He can have the dumbest of moments with puzzles. But I think he can have those moments while, but overall, he actually mostly does okay with a lot of the puzzles. He's just had a couple of the all time and like the one with him and Nicole obviously stands out as like all time, all time bad moments with puzzles, but he's really, really good at the actual competition stuff. He's just bad at the politics stuff and just hasn't got the win in the final, but he's a lot better. I think that he gets credit for and love seeing him get another good elimination win under his belt. Tough to see Brad go tough to see Arrow one dwindle further. Um, but I do again, similar to last week, I feel like I find myself thinking the more interesting person for the rest of the season was the one that won. Um, and that would be Corey here, Rachel and Jeanne, then Rachel locked in ready to go. I can't imagine how just ready to go for this. She truly was after the all-stars four bullshit (laughs) elimination with Kara of like, I didn't actually get to do anything interesting or exciting here getting to actually do a like workout sport style elimination perfect for her she gets to show out let it let it all out really really get to compete have that fun moment so amazing to get to see it is now just team road rules as she says four people team road rules two men two women which for those who have been long subscribers of the channel or the podcast you may remember years ago my best pitch I could come up with that I said for season 40. And I think I said this around the time of Spies, Lies, and Allies. Like it was a while ago was the challenge generations, 40 cast members, 10 teams of four. And it would be little pockets of generations instead of eras. It was generations. And it started with a road OG's road rules team and an OG's real world team. And now here we are. 
they more or less did my version of the season with Battle of the Airs. They didn't steal it from me. I wasn't the only person who could come up with that idea, but they did the same thing I was asking for. And now it the one part that was a little different is almost kind of coming true here. We have a team of four that is just old G road rulers. So I love seeing that. Please, again, let Derek stay. Jane, a tough blow. Solid showing on her part, for real, though. She would have beaten a lot of the other women in this game from what we saw here in this. It wasn't going to happen with Rachel. There was no chance with that. Awards now. Best quote. I did not do the best job on my note-taking in this episode. I found myself a couple times remembering that, oh yeah, I'm in my base setup here again. I can actually take really good notes. I got the dual screen, the whole thing. And so I definitely missed a few, but... The, the main standout, Tina starts the episode off in the moment that looks like we nailed each other. It was very funny between her and Nehemiah. I liked Naya also at the very end of the episode, the give it to me daddy when volunteering for the target. But the winner of it, and I don't have it written down word for word, but Darrell. The I'll jump out of a plane if I have to. Actually, no. Actually, yes. I'm desperate. I will. But please don't make me jump out of a damn plane. Like the whole back and forth, him, it just it was un unbelievable. So, so good. And the Air One has been, as bad as they have been at the actual competition and the actual game, they have been just that good in the confessional booth. So we give the best quote to Darrell here. Best moment, the Vacation Alliance handshake. Again, for me, imagining how angry that probably made a lot of fans around and just imagining fans throwing things at their TV, yelling at their TV, all of it. I was entertained. Um, the Air 2 confessional before the Daily certainly stood out. Rachel and Brad, it's balloons popping for them to then turn around and help a crawling Derek try to get through the thing. That moment was just like, if there was, there's the, a lot of pictures, a lot of images you could pull of Air 1's complete mess that they have been in every Daily Challenge, but that one might be, that takes the cake. Um, classic bananas pot stirring and then Corey getting the win uh, and Rachel getting the win and getting to see Rachel in her element actually truly competing. All of those. I'm giving it to bananas though. The bananas pot stirring performance going back in, talking to Devin, lying his face off, um, but knowing what he's doing, knowing how he's manipulating two different people in the house to do things that benefit him. Masterclass from him which means it should be no surprise where the MVP is going. Jenny, Josh, Rachel, Corey, all get some votes, but Johnny Bananas is your episode six MVP. Let's talk targets now. We, at the end of the episode, we get Tina, Darrell, Nehemiah, Aviv, Naya, Jordan, Kylan, and Michelle. Those are your new targets. Basically, everyone volunteers. Uh, you know, Tina doesn't have to, Darrell does. Uh, Naya does, Jordan does, Kylan does, Michelle does. Eritu is the only one that doesn't. Aviv, though, is pretty understanding. It's between her and Kara. She hasn't done it. She gets it. No hard feelings there. Nehemiah is the only one, is the standout that is not a volunteer and rightfully thinks it should not be me and not that I have ties to you, Rachel, necessarily, but, like, what are we doing here? And it's him. And he's got to be pissed. He's got to be so pissed at this point. This team is, is just not doing him any favors. Rachel's protecting her good friends and Ryan and Derek and alliance members, cross-team alliance members here. And if I'm Ryan, obviously I am not volunteering. That would be a stupid thing to do when you don't have to and you could just be saved by your alliances in the house. That's called good political social gameplay on his part. So I am not saying he should have, but it's kind of bullshit that he doesn't. Obviously, again, smart. I wouldn't do it. He shouldn't do it. But if you're Nehemiah, it is very well within your right to be like, what the fuck? Ryan, you should be doing this. Everyone else is taking turns on all the teams. We've kind of said we were going to do that a bit, but other teams pick on us a little more and, you know, want to call out certain people. What is going on here? So he deserves to be pissed. And honestly, well, yes, Rachel, I totally get it from Rachel's perspective uh, and, you know, picking, saving members, you know, close allies of hers. I still, though, feel like there's a little bit of me that's like Rachel and Corey shouldn't be asking for volunteers at this point. 
they should be thinking more strategically and saying, no, 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 no one needs to volunteer. I'll be making my selections. TJ, thank you. When, when I say a name, that's who's going to be the target. Don't worry about them raising their hands because Rachel shouldn't be picking Jordan. She's going to no, Jordan, too bad. I would like it to be Devin because I need Darrell to win if he ends up down here. And have you seen us in daily challenges? He's probably going to end up down here. I want it to be Devin, not Jordan. And uh, Ryan, sorry, buddy. I want it to be you, not Nehemiah. And maybe, honestly, even Theo, I want it to be you and not Kylan. Because Kylan beat Darrell in an elimination on last season. And Jordan beat Darrell in an elimination on last season. They were on All-Stars 3 or 4, whichever one of 3, 4, 3. All-Stars 3. I think that's when that happened. But, like, there's a big argument for her to be like, I'm protecting my team. <laughs> and so I want Darrell to have the best case matchups possible if he ends up down here. And same for Corey. Say F it. Tell Tori she's going in again for your team. Be like, nah, Naya, I rock with you. We we kind of we were kind of on the bottom of our team. We like we're not you have a little bit more of a leg up because you're tied to Jordan a little bit, but he's more tied to Tori, and you know that as well as I do. So put your hand down. Tori's going in. And he should be like, Casey, you can go in for your team too. I don't need to be, I don't need Michelle in there. I need all the heaviest hitters. You're all going in. None of you are working with me. So F y'all. I want to see if I could put Rachel back in. I would, but I can't. I want Kara on era two. I want Tori on era three. I want Casey on era four. I want big names, heavy hitters that are not working with me to go home. That's what I would do. It's a lot to ask of them. You know, when people are volunteering, not ruffle feathers, save all your friends. I get it. I get it. The other thing I get is this show because uh, did I mention at the beginning of this podcast that your boy went perfect on his predictions last week? Because I did. Erwan was going to continue to flounder and be an elimination and Derek hopefully didn't actually break his leg. Nailed that. Era 4 would win. Era 2 and 3 would have dissension. Nailed that. John A and Brad would go home. Nailed, nailed, nailed across the board. I'm like Tina or Nehemiah with the nails. I'm just pounding them in there. Okay. This week's predictions then. Let's see if we can continue the hot streak. It's rare that I ever go perfect. So the idea that I'm going to go back to back episodes with anything being right is just completely ridiculous. And there is no chance any of this is going to happen, but I'll do my best. I think an either or here, if you will, if Derek stays, if Derek is fine to continue in the game, then I think Erewhon will get last at the next daily challenge. If Derek is not fine and does have to leave the game because of this injury, I think Erewhon gets first. Let me explain. We see in the next week on the daily that we had seen in the trailer of them running and jumping off of the roof of the very tall building. What do you know? Darrell says, don't make me jump out of a plane. Jumping off a building is basically the same to some degree, at least to him in his fear of heights. And we had Brad and Derek looking at the tallest building in the city this episode. And what do you know, next episode, we're going to be on top of that very tall building. If the, they're, they, they essentially look to be doing a game where you run, jump off and have to grab something. And I'm betting it's just like, how many of you, what's your success rate in grabbing those things? And it seems like something that the less people you have would be a bit of an advantage if all of those people are really good and could do it. If they're like, hey, you've got four people, that team has eight. So you guys all get to go twice and all of you are good at it and can do it. Suddenly big advantage. So if Derek stays and he's hobbled and he can't jump that far and is already short, he maybe can't grab that thing and Darrell's scared of heights, they end up probably getting last. If Derek leaves and it's like, Rachel, you can go two or three times. Tina, you can go twice. You can get this. Darrell, if you get over your fear, you can easily jump and do this. Suddenly, they're cleaning everyone and they're getting the win. So that's a prediction. Derek leaves, Erewhon wins. Derek stays, Erewhon loses. And that is to say nothing of Derek's abilities in this game because obviously Derek is amazing at this game. Regardless though, I'm going to go ahead and just say Era 4 wins again. I think they win again. And I'm going to say that one way or the other, I know, so essentially that, that first prediction doesn't count. Um, they won't, because Era 1 can't get last because that doesn't make sense with the rest of these predictions. Air 4 wins again is prediction number one. Prediction number two is that Nehemiah and Aviv lose to Naya and Jordan in individual. I'm not predicting that it's a, a team elimination. Although that would be, I think, I think that twist is for sure coming. I think that's the next twist we're going to get is they're going to be, you guys are competing together. 
as partners in this elimination for the first time. But I don't think that happens next week. I do think Nehemiah and Aviv lose. Nia and Jordan win. Air 4 wins the Daily Challenge. So with that, thank you for being here again next week. Won't be Wednesday night. We'll be like midday sometime on Thursday celebrating the anniversary. We'll get to the podcast of the day later. Appreciate your patience. Follow, subscribe, rate, review, all those things. DMs are open. I know I've been a little slow recently. I haven't been on Instagram as much, but I will get back to anyone and everyone that messages if you want to talk challenge at Challenge Historian on Instagram or comment below if you're watching on YouTube. Love you. Appreciate you. Talk to you next week. Peace.